It was the year 1790 when Anishinaabe leaders first negotiated a treaty for traditional land in what's now southern Ontario. But through the course of history, official reserve status was denied to the band. That is, until now. The Caldwell First Nation is celebrating and preparing for the future after being granted possession of the land in Leamington, Ontario. And Robin Perkins is a counselor and acting chief of Caldwell First Nation. She joins us tonight from Leamington, Ontario with more. Hi, Robin. I guess I just should start by saying congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me, too. So help people understand how significant this is. Uh, what does it mean to have reserve status in the community? Like, what were you not able to do without and what are you able to do now? Well, what it means to the community, this was, you know, this was a 230 year promise that has finally been fulfilled. So um, there, there's some healing that came along with this and there was definitely some sorrow. There was a uh, past warriors, chiefs, councils, um, and just strong leaders from the community that never got to celebrate this. Mm. Um, but moving forward, we have high hopes and we know that we're gonna do great things and be a prosperous community. Yeah, what are what are your plans now that you have reserve status? What can you do? Oh, we can do we can do lots. So uh, we're looking to build uh, housing. And one of the biggest things that we're focused on is starting economic development. Um, one thing that this council has always discussed for our entire term so far is how the band office should never be the nation's biggest employer. Mm -hmm. So when we started in 2018, we had six employees. Currently we have 30 and we're still growing as we plan to start up our economic development, uh, begin uh, building houses. And the economic development I think is going to be what makes our nation very prosperous in the future. And it's going to guarantee a home for the next seven generations. Uh, with Without the reserve land, we didn't have a place to, to build the community. So we had to wait and uh, getting back to our lands and being able to be a community together again is the number one thing. Uh, historically, we worked together, we uh, cared together, hunted, fished, everything together. So it's bringing that community back and that is something that we haven't had in a long time. Um, so it's, it's a lot of healing and that's going to be what keeps our nation going forever. Is it also about you know, self-reliance, what does that mean for the community as well? Um, self-reliance, uh, so self-generated wealth is uh, is the most important thing in order to get to, uh, you know, our self-reliance and self-government. So it's through economic development that we will get there. Um, so with with that, that, that will give us our culture back. It will give us, uh, help us relearn our language and, and work together as a community again. So a, as we generate wealth and get away from federal funding, that is how we will truly become a sovereign and, and self-sustaining First Nation. Why do you think it took so long to get here? I mean, does this say something kind of about the process overall, about who gets to decide, uh, you know, where the land is going to go and who gets to have access to it? Uh, well, it took so long. Um, there was a lot of research that had to go into proving that we didn't sign the 1790 treaty, that it, it wasn't us who signed it. Uh, we didn't sign away our, our lands. So there was a lot of research and work that had to go into to proving that and uh, proving that Point Peely was our home. So um, that, that, that was one piece. And then another piece is there was negotiations that were going on uh, for how much the land claim settlement would be. And that took some time. There was a, a vote in the early 2000s, I believe, for a settlement of $23.4 million, and the membership turned it down. And then it wasn't until 2010 that we voted through a $105 million land claim settlement. Wow. And so, so, and then, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, how is the community reacting to this news, and how excited are they about the future of this reserve? Overall, all are just overwhelmed. Um, you know, you're always told that it's coming soon, uh, the reserve status, it's coming soon, but it, 
it never happened. Like five, ten years would go by, and and you still wouldn't have it when they said soon. So it's it's relief, it's excitement. Uh, a lot of members are very excited to move to the reserve and and start being a part of the community again, where we can all be together and, and learn together. So overall, it, it's it's excitement. Um, I, I I would be lying if I said there weren't some. Uh, nervous aspects of mm. it uh, because it is uh, going on to something new that we haven't done before. But uh, one thing that our nation is known for is our resiliency. And we we will always be resilient. We'll be able to push through any obstacle or anything that slows us down. We can always put, push through. So we know no matter what comes, we'll be, uh, we'll be a strong nation at the end of the day. All right, Robin Perkins, the counselor and acting chief of Caldwell First Nation in Ontario, who's just received reserve status after more than 200 years. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Oh, thank you for having me.